Hey guys, I'm back, and I'm here with a few more games here in the game zone. Just like last episode, I'll be telling you one board game, but I'll be telling you one free video game and one video game in this one that you have to buy. So let's just jump into it. The board game I'll be telling you about today is a game called Monopoly Deal. Now, if you've ever stood over late for our church, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Monopoly Deal is basically a Monopoly card game. You start out with five cards and draw two every time it's your turn. Basically, the regular Monopoly takes a really long time to play, but Monopoly Deal takes 10 minutes to play with the same strategy that Monopoly has that makes you want to take over the world. The game is around $10, and when quarantine stops, you can, you can come over and play at any time. The free game I'll be talking about today is called Battle Cats. Battle Cats is a free mobile game that allows you to collect hundreds of cats and take over the world. Battle Cats is a highly addictive game and is perfect for the ones who like either cats or collecting or both. That's basically all that it is. A very simple game, yet so addicting. And the final game that we have today is called Night Squad. Night Squad is a game where you could play as a knight and kill others in various different modes, from soccer to last man standing. You could play with up to people, both online and local. The game is 15 bucks and is only available on PC and Xbox One. So that's all the games we have for today. Once again, I'll be back with next week with more games. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. Virus conversations. What is up, everyone? Hey, me and Easy P wanted to bring you some what to watch news, and Easy P took care of the kids, but I want to take care of you couples out there when those kids go to bed. So, what are some things that we would like together, us adults, right? Us couples. Well, this week, I'm going to give you some more action oriented things, but next week, I'll give you some more uh, girly stuff, if you will. I'll consult the wife, if you will. Well, this week, I want to start in Amazon. So, if you have an a Amazon Prime, you're going to like these shows, I promise you. Number one, it's Bosch. Now, Bosch is a man's man, a man's detective. You don't see too many shows like this on TV anymore because of gender neutrality. But this guy is a hardcore dude who's a detective who's figuring out things all across San Francisco, all across uh, that part of the country. And he's hardcore and you got to figure out, is he good or is he bad? Is he on the up and up or not? And it's just lots of drama, lot, great acting in this. I'm telling you, it, you're going to love it. Check out Bosch on Amazon Prime. My second pick uh, to binge watch. Um, now, Bosch had five seasons and the sixth season is coming out in two weeks. But this one's called Jack Ryan. Everybody loves Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan. This is another sort of CIA kind of a thing. And Jack Ryan, of course, is an accountant in the CIA who ends up being, or an analyst who ends up being on the field. Now, Jack Ryan has been played by the likes of Hampton Ford and Ben Affleck. But I think the guy from The Office here, uh, John Krakmeimer or Krakenheimer, whatever his name is, he does a great job, and I really think that you're going to love the cast. Now, the only downside to this is it's only two seasons, but they're two awesome seasons. So check out Jack Ryan on Amazon Prime right now. And so you're probably going, what is my third one? That's five. I'm going to give you three. The third one and final one is, you guessed it, this isn't everybody's cup of tea, but it's streaming number one on Netflix. It is The Tiger King. The Tiger King... This guy has a worse mullet than my friend Daryl did in high school. This guy owns 
his own tiger uh, zoo and he breeds tigers. And then the girl in the picture up here, right there, she is somebody who tries to save tigers. Now the drama exists in the tension in this underground world and all the things that happen in the underground world of breeding and um, zookeeping tigers and those kind of animals. Now the girl who's going after this guy and his zoo and his income and his breeding is trying to save the tigers. But the, the, the trick is somehow her millionaire husband has gone missing and she's now accused of feeding him to the tigers yet she has all of this money to go after these uh, tiger breeders and the guy with the mullet the guy with the mullet ain't gonna have it and tries to fight her and the drama ensues there now let me tell you this isn't everybody's cup of tea it's like a train wreck you can't keep your eyes off of it I don't recommend children being around when you're watching that one. But if you want some qu uh, crazy, weird entertainment, The Tiger King might just be for you. Well, thank you for this episode of What to Watch with Easy P and John. And now to our next segment. Hey, guys. Uh, we're back with another Dad's Dumb segment. So in this episode, we're going to be reintroducing the magician himself, Fooling You. So, uh, would you like to come oh, in? Oh! Come roll! Ah! I saw, yeah, I saw, yeah, I saw! Welcome, welcome back. Welcome, yo! It's fully you! Fooling you, Wu-Tang Clan! Fast hands, fast hands! Yeah, uh... Oh, you like mustache? Mm -hmm, Stop so... staring at my mustache! Alright, so... I uh... have in my hands a towel. Do you see the towel at home? I scoot back and over this way. Okay, now you see towel at home. Now I need you to watch. Okay, watch. Are you ready for joke? Yes, everyone watch. Not joke, magician. Oh. I'm magician, fooling you. You see towel? I see towel, you see towel? I see towel. Okay, see watch. Towel. Watch. Are you watching? Okay, here we go. All right. Watch. 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 You magic word? Abracadabra. Fooling you! Fooling you at home. Watch. Watch. Are you watching? Watch. Uh -huh. Watch. 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 Fooling you! Fooling you! You're welcome for that. Fooling you, go, go now. Right. Fooling you. Back to Wu Tang Clan. Fast hands, fast hands. All right, everyone, that was fooling you. Now, uh, off to um, the jokes now. Hey, get that magician off of my segment. He was, all right. My goodness, boy. Don't you know who the star of this show is? Guess what, guys? We have something special this week. I'm going to make, look at this face. Look at this face. Can you see it? It's not going to laugh. It. It's not going to laugh. This face is going to laugh today. No, it's not. I'm going to make it laugh. So what I need you to do is to help me at home. Are you ready? Five jokes. He's going to close his eyes. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Fooling you. Here we go. I'm trying to get some light over on this face over here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fooling you. Boy, that made things a lot worse. A lot worse. All right. Here we go. Let's. Oh, this is even worse. Is that better? Yeah, it's better. I'll just cut this. All right, hey guys, look at this face. It ain't that pretty, but I'm gonna make it laugh. And I need your help at home, and see if I make you laugh, all right? I'm gonna tell three dad jokes, and he's gonna laugh. Mm -mm. And I'm gonna try to make you laugh at home. So are you ready? Are you gonna follow me? Are you watching? I'm not going to Okay, watch. are you ready? Close your eyes, close your all eyes right. at home. Here's my first joke. Why? Open your eyes. Why couldn't the bicycle stand up by itself? Why couldn't the bicycle stand up by itself? Uh, because it was too tired. Too tired. 
Two mm-hmm. tires on a bike. Two That's tires. Not ha- I'm, not, I'm not laughing at that right. one. Oh, for one. But um, I have more. I have more. Okay, close your eyes. That's one for you, zero for me. How many did you get at home? Did you did you laugh? Too tired. Here we go. You want to hear another joke? Okay. Here's where we go. Okay. Close your eyes. Would you like to hear a joke about construction, Elijah? Open your eyes. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Yeah, getting no, construction, no. working Breathe. on it. Oh yeah, Breathing. oh yeah. Woo-hoo. Breathing out of your nose doesn't count as a, what? whatever. Yes, you're welcome. That's one for me. Mm-mm. Did you laugh at that one? Working on it. That was a good joke. Close your eyes. Stay still there, will you, Skippy? This isn't e-learning. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. You ready for the next joke? Mm-hmm. I've been Why do you life. never see elephants hiding in the trees? Why do you never see elephants hiding in the trees? Okay, open your eyes. Because they're good at it. What? Because they're good at it. <laughs> they hide so good you can't see them. <laughs> I, I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> why don't you hear elephants? I mean, why don't you ever see elephants hiding in a tree? Because they're good at it. They're good at what? Hiding in the tree. That's why you never see them. Oh my gosh, my kid. Nice to meet you. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm gonna... That makes no sense. <laughs> you can't. Why do you never see an elephant in a tree? Because they're good at hiding. My goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, so did you laugh? See, he's no. laughing. See? It makes I get no that sense. one. I'm so that, that, at how that's stupid that was. Two to me and one to you. Yes? Wait, one to me, one to you. No, I've already done two. Construction, I won. An elephant, I won. Okay, you two won the first one. one. Okay, you ready? Are you following along? How many <sighs> did you laugh at? Okay, look at this. Look at this face. All right, here we go. Close your eyes. This done. is joke number four. Did you hear the rumor about butter? Open your eyes. Did you hear the rumor about butter? Well, I'm not going to spread it. (laughs) Yes! No. No! Yes! That was hilarious because you spread butter. I'm not... What? See, you laugh. That's not a laugh. <laughs> I feel like that's a laugh. Intensely. All right, I'll tell you what. I'll give you two, and me too. This is the tiebreaker. Are you laughing at home? Dad's dumb segment. Dad's dumb jokes. Here it is. Okay. Elijah. Yes. Here's my last joke. All right. All right. Open your eyes. Guess what, Elijah? Spring is here, and I'm so excited. I wet my plants. <laughs> wet my plants. Come on! I wet, I'm so excited. About my plants. I feel like you're you laughing. Water, you're laughing you water, more you water than the I am. Plants. No, I wet my plants. <laughs> See, I win. Did you laugh at my joke? It was a good joke. Hey, They're not good. that was fun. We need to get on to our next segment, don't you think? I think so. All right, and away we go. What is up, kids? I'm so excited to be here. It's so crazy. Are you? Hey, listen, it is story time with Pastor John, and we're going to get right to it. Today, here is the question you need to be able to answer to your parents after this video. What is Easter really about? I'll give you a clue. It's not about chocolate bunnies. It's not about Easter egg hunts. It's not about Easter egg drops. It's not about anything to do with Easter eggs or pulling them apart and finding prizes. None of that. That's just something we do to have fun on Easter. So the question is, what is Easter really about? Well, today's exciting video will explain that to you and show you the real story of Easter. All right, today's story, hint, hint, is called The Empty Tomb. So let's see if you can answer the question, what is Easter all about?
After hanging in agony on the cross for hours, Jesus cried out, It is finished, and he surrendered his spirit to God. Despite his sadness, Joseph of Arimathea, a man who was secretly a disciple of Jesus, knew that to ensure Jesus had a proper burial, he had to do it before the quickly approaching Sabbath. Grief-stricken, Joseph went before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, to ask if he could remove Jesus' body from the cross. After Pilate gave him permission, he and Nicodemus went to the cross with a large amount of myrrh and aloes to anoint Jesus' body for burial. Together, Joseph and Nicodemus carefully wrapped Jesus' body in strips of linen with burial spices in accordance with Jewish tradition. Near the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden where a tomb had been cut out of the rock, something only wealthy people could afford. This tomb belonged to Joseph, and no one had yet been laid to rest there. It was in this tomb that Joseph and Nicodemus laid the body of Jesus. Before they left, they rolled an enormous stone in front of the tomb's entrance, sealing it shut. Before the sun had risen on Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene gathered the spices and perfumes she had prepared to complete the burial customs for Jesus and made her way to the tomb. When she arrived, she discovered the giant stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. Deeply distressed by what she had seen, she ran as fast as she could to tell the disciples Peter and John what had happened. They've taken our Lord's body, and we don't know where, Mary exclaimed. After hearing Mary's account, Peter and John sprinted to the tomb. John arrived first, but he did not enter the tomb. Without hesitation, Peter walked into the tomb and noticed that the strips of linen that Jesus had been wrapped up in were laying empty in a pile and the burial cloth that was placed over his head and face was neatly folded next to them. As John entered the empty tomb, he didn't fully understand what had happened, but he believed that Jesus had risen from the dead. Puzzled by what they had seen, Peter and John returned to their homes. Too upset to return home with Peter and John, Mary Magdalene remained at the empty tomb. As she wept, she looked up through her tears into the tomb, and she saw two angels in dazzling white robes. They were sitting where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the foot. Seeing Mary's tears, the angels asked, Woman, why are you crying? Still sobbing, Mary replied, They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. As Mary turned away from the angels to make her way home, she saw a man had been standing behind her. But this was no ordinary man. It was Jesus. Somehow Mary did not recognize Jesus. She thought he was the gardener. Jesus asked Mary, Why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Mary, still thinking he was the gardener, begged him, If you have taken him away, please tell me where so I can get him. Then Jesus called Mary's name, and suddenly she recognized that the man was Jesus. She exclaimed, Teacher, and fell to her knees to worship at his feet. Jesus told Mary to go tell the disciples. After hearing Mary's report of what happened at the tomb and that she had seen Jesus, the disciples gathered together behind locked doors afraid of what the Jewish leaders might do to them. Suddenly Jesus appeared among them in the locked house and said, Peace to you. The disciples were overjoyed to see Jesus with their own eyes. After Jesus had shown them the wounds in his hands and his side, he told the disciples that they would continue his mission, going throughout the world and preaching God's love. Wasn't that an awesome story? I love the music at the end. It's just so cool. But what is Easter all about? Well, it's about the death 
and resurrection of Jesus. He died for our sins and then overcame them by rising from the dead so that our sins are forgiven if you put your trust and faith in Jesus. That's what Easter is about. Hey, I love you guys. You are awesome. I will see you the next time. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, sent by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in this world, received up in glory, magnified. Hey guys, welcome to the Easter service, huh? Sort of crazy. Hey, I just wanted to let each one of you know and everybody that's watching how much Kim and I and our family loves you guys and we're so grateful that we've been journeying together over the last year. Today is Easter and it's a really, really super important day. So I'd like to just share a couple thoughts with you guys and then I'm gonna ask you guys to join me live after this. So right now we're confronted with this quarantine and um, it's not just a usual lockdown. There's a little bit of fear out there because of this virus. But at this time, with all of this time on our hands, we have a lot of time to sort of examine our hearts, our attitudes towards one another, especially God, and then our lives. So will you just do that now with me as I talk about the resurrection of Jesus just for a few minutes? You know, when we look back on the cross of Jesus, we know that it was a Roman instrument of death they used the cross, that death, as a way to show their power over the people that they have condemned. And then they declare a victory over that, showing their power to the entire war world. They would use these instruments of death on the roads, 
and they would plant them by the roads, excuse me, these crosses with people on them or on hills, that it would be a full display of for the whole world to see of their power. That was what we call right-handed way to grab power, instill fear, and rule over people and make them serve you. This is often what I see is how the world works in a lot of different ways. It has an agenda and it uses all of its power to get what it wants, no matter who is in the way. Well, in many ways, we experience powers like this all the time. And one thing we all know that this may be a great way to get what you want, but it's also a great way to make enemies. But I want you to see that that's the exact opposite power of what the all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful God did when he had this plan of redemption and reconciliation for you and I. Today, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus did not use right-handed power and make you serve him. No, he he's nothing like Caesar and he's nothing like Rome. God sent Jesus to die for the reason of taking all those wrong things that are in our hearts and in our minds away and all those wrong things that we've done to each other away. His was not to take away all our efforts to try to get to God or get God's approval. It was to remove all the shame and guilt that came along with trying to get his approval things we lord over each other and because of our wrongful uh, actions which have condemned others and which we've committed in our lives towards each other's and against ourselves if you can believe that you see the cross was a display of power this world has never seen before but it wasn't based on right-handed power it was based on exact opposite you see jesus willfully took the cross on our behalf. His power looked like no power at all. It wasn't what everyone was expecting out of a Messiah, but the wounds he had endured were really meant for this world, were meant for you and I. We were the ones that were supposed to get judged. And we so frequently don't come to God for fear of judgment when we know that Jesus has already taken that judgment and placed it on Jesus on our behalf. You see, God and Jesus took what we deserved because of sin and placed on Jesus that judgment, that condemnation, his wrath against sin, instead of taking it out on you and me. So the excuse of um, God is judgmental is crazy. Jesus received punishment and died because of you and me. But today we celebrate that he conquered it and raised again to put to death, death. You see, many say God is judgmental and that's not true. And mean that the judgment uh, that has been made and placed on Jesus is finished. Well, you're right then, because judgment is finished in that sense. He took our judgment. He took our consequences. And he took the trade-off, which means he got all our sin, all of our crap, all the muck and mire we waved through in our psychology and, quote, spirituality. And when we place our trust in him, he takes all of that garbage and we get his righteousness, his perfectness, his perfection, his love, his goodness. And that's really good news for you and me. He gets our sin and we get all that God offers in Christ. But the question is, why would Jesus endure such a cross for you and me? Why would he take that punishment? Well, there's a story in the New Testament of one of the apostles named Thomas that explains this to you and me. You see, after Jesus rose from the dead, Thomas was not there when the disciples had seen Jesus for the first time. You see, right after Jesus died, um, the apostles just scattered and hid in fear for their lives. So they weren't all together. But then three days later, Jesus appeared, and he appeared to several of them at once. And as you can imagine, when they saw Jesus appear on that day, they were extremely excited because they thought their lives were over, right? 
So what would you do? Well, I would do the same thing you do. I would go tell my best friend. Well, Thomas wasn't there when that happened. So they went to Thomas to go to him. But when they told him, they were sort of surprised because Thomas was so devastated from seeing what happened to Jesus on that cross, from the devastation of feeling like his whole life was, was for nothing following this guy and now he's dead. He was just extremely depressed, extremely just like, I just can't go through that again. So when they told him, he refused to believe. He said, unless I see or I touch his hands, where the holes are, and his side where they pierced him, I will never believe. That's how devastated he was. Well, he did this for eight days, guys. This is all in the Bible. Literally, it says eight days later, Jesus appeared to all of them at one time, and this time Thomas was there. You see, what, had ha what happened when Jesus literally appeared? Well, the first thing that he did was he walked over to Thomas and he said to him, Thomas, come here and touch my hands and place your hand on my side. But Thomas never really touched him. He saw Jesus and he fell to his knees in awe and he cried out, my Lord and my God. So how does that answer our question? How does it answer the question of why would Jesus endure this cruel punishment cross on our behalf. You see, Thomas wanted to see the wounds of Jesus to verify he was alive. But Jesus wasn't showing his wounds to Jesus to, to verify uh, that he was alive. He was showing Thomas's, uh, his wounds to show him how much he loves you and I, how much God loves his children. Jesus didn't stick out his hand and say, Thomas, look, this proves that I'm alive, that I'm resurrected. No, he stuck out his hand and said, this shows you how much I love you. And that's why he endured a cross. You guys, the Romans saw the cross and wanted it to be a display of their authority in this world, just like all of our governments, rulers, corporations, whatever. Everybody's power hungry. But that time passed for the Romans and the times we have now will pass. But Jesus looked at that cross and he embraced it and he conquered those authorities of this world, seen and unseen, that try to back us, that place the power of sin on us and the power of death, which we're all inevit inevitably going to uh, come to. And then he rose from the dead. Why? because he loved you. You see, he longs to place his heart in you. He longs to put his spirit in you and become one with you. And he wants to journey with you daily. And he wants to show you his abundance of goodness in everyday life. Today, as you think about your life, as you think about your faith, as you think about where you are in your walk, I want you to consider the power that Jesus displayed by suffering and taking our sin and how he conquered that on the resurrection. You see, when we look at those wounds, I want you to see what Thomas saw. They're not just proof that he's alive. It's proof of how much he loves you and how much he is better for you, your kids, and your family. And it's better to live for Jesus. You see, King Jesus didn't come with mighty armies to, mighty armies to, to make you believe and you uh, come to faith and he's going to lord over you. No, he, he, he did it much more quietly, passively. It almost looked like no power, but we know it ended up being the greatest power of all because he rose from the death and killed death and sin so that we may have life and so that he can put his heart in you. In that, put our faith in him. He makes your body his temple and that temple can be filled with his spirit if you just place your faith in Jesus. No matter what, guys, I want you to know that you can trust Jesus, that even in suffering, even in isolation, we can turn to him and have life and not let the unseen things of fear and depression or those kind of things break our hearts or break our minds or break our relationships. He longs for you 
And he is the ultimate relationship. And by being in relationship with, with him, it just makes all other relationships that much more better. He loves you guys. I ask you to turn to him, to give your heart to him, to reflect in this moment of all that God has done for you so that you could have abundant life. Now listen, if you don't know him, all you have to do is just pray in your heart and say, Lord, I want to know you. And I guarantee if you're making that prayer, he's already working on you because he already loves you. Just say, Lord, I'll give you my heart in my life. And read the, read the word a little bit and begin to have that relationship through the word and by your heart in relationship in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? So listen, right after this video, I'm going to post a Zoom link. And I would love to pray with you and your family on this Easter just to make it that much more special and just to make it that much more centered around Christ. Let's show our kids who is important in our life and what is important in our life. I encourage you to please click on this link and pray together. Um, as soon as I'm done with this video, I'll post it. If I haven't posted it in the chat section already, I'll post it on the website itself uh, along with the ID link or the password to get in. But let's do that um, and pray together. I want you to know that God loves you, that he did this for you, that you can trust him and that Jesus is the better. I hope you'll join me for a Zoom meeting and a little prayer in a minute. Guys, I love you. Happy Easter. He's alive.